for this episode, we're going to do an AMA style ans- question answer yes. session. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. <laughs> Welcome to the Low Tide Boys, a swim run podcast. I'm Chip. And I'm Chris, and this is episode 226 of the show. Um, for this episode, we're going to do an AMA style ans- question answer yes. session. Ask us anything. Ask us anything. And uh, we're also posting this on YouTube. So if you want to see our faces and in Studio O, we're usually in Studio G. It's a new. Yeah. We're debuting the new studio. Yeah. Well, I mean, for well, us, you, know. you you work in here normally. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. But yes, yeah, so we're super stoked about this. We put out a call a couple of weeks ago, got a bunch of really amazing questions. And yeah, it's always humbling when people just reply, period. But it's kind of cool. Yeah. And we know folks have lots of questions about Swarm Run, about us, about hypotheticals, our take on things. So <laughs> you'll you'll get a lot of that. But uh, as always, we always welcome these type of things uh, on a regular basis to our email, Instagram DMs in person, whatever works for you will work for us. Uh, but yeah. Um, so we just, any, should, should we, we just, just do it? Into it? <laughs> it's a lot of questions. <clears throat> There's a lot of questions. So we'll see we how many... answered, well, we, we put on every single question that, that was asked. So you yeah, know, unless they were we're not, redundant, but they weren't any redundant. skipping the hard ones either. We're not skipping the hard ones. Okay. So first question is from Anita H from Chicago. Hope you both had a great winter and are mm. charged up for the spring. Sounds like it. I'll say so. Yeah. She she mentioned that she um she would love to know what happened to our how's the body how's the mind check ins. <laughs> she said my husband and I have used that for the last two summers in training oh. and we'll do so again this year. In addition, a friend used it in his wedding, which is just like, wow. All right, so we've really made it. So yeah, um, great question. I think it's perfect to start this with you know how's the body how's the mind. I guess the history of it, Chipper. I, I'm yeah. sure I asked you at some point because it was a Chris thing. This is a Chris line of questioning. It's a Chris line of questioning, but I don't know. It would always it might even predated the show. I think the the origin, or at least from what I remember, it would always be kind of like after a race or a a notable training session. Like we would go out, we'd yeah. have like a five hour, four hour swim run practice, <laughs> and then you know we're home. Hanging out with the families and, yep. you know, like six o'clock, seven, how's the body, how's the mind text would come through or the next time we're, we're kind of meeting or mm-hmm. checking in after a race. So that's how it was. I don't. Yeah. And then I think it was our countdown to Atala. Yeah. Where we kind of a couple years ago. Had a check in about it. Yeah. yeah. And then after the race, I think we, our race report, sometimes we would kind of feature uh, mm-hmm. that question. But um, yeah, I guess. Well, let me ask you, how's the body? How's the mind? Yeah. It's good. I think all it's all good. I definitely charged up after winter. Um, you know, we'll, got a, a new coach that I've been working with. Really excited about like the the progress and the in the training. And you know, both of us have really been focusing on strength. And sort of at the tail end of last year, I really started, and and Chris has been on this for a while. But like the sort of mobility, yoga, stretching, flexibility, just kind of staying on top of that. And I have really noticed how that does help the body. So I've been very more diligent than I've ever been with it, trying to get in two, three, three sort of mobility stretching sessions a week and then two strength sessions. Uh, so I've, I've really been uh, liking that. Um, and the mind, yeah, just excited for uh, for this season. Um Really, really looking forward to another exciting season of, of races and some yeah. West Coast races that we can can go out with the families. I mean, we're uh, basically there. doing every race on the you know on in our West time Coast. zone. Yeah, which is which is good. Chris, how's the body? How's the mind for you? <laughs> Pretty good. I'm much older than you, Chipper. So listeners <laughs> at home or people watching us on YouTube, I'm ten years older than Chipper. So my hips have been bugging me for probably about a month, but I've been throwing every mobility trick at them and I'm starting to feel a little bit better, which is good. But body's doing good. Just got through a couple really mountainous 50 Ks, yep. which was fun. Um, no DNFs. Um, good. So it was good. And then the mind. Yeah, same. I'm super getting, you know, I actually, I'd say maybe like a couple months ago, I was just like, oh yeah, it'll be fun to do swim runs again. But now that like, like James happened yeah, and stuff like that, started, I just yeah. felt like my own sort of um, enthusiasm and usual level of stoke is definitely just like 
you know, just on all the time again. Yeah, I think it really, I mean, for me, it really starts to pick up when the season kicks off, like like you just mentioned, Swarmer, like James just happened, and, you know, seeing the community, the people that we love, that we've been, uh, you know, getting messages from, hearing how they're excited, how their race went, definitely kind of like starts to, to ramp things up and obviously getting more questions in and, and mm-hmm. uh you know, uh, activity on the low tie boys media. Properties. Oh yeah. <laughs> sort of the weekly, what, what suit should I buy question yeah. starting to pop up again, which is, which is exciting. We have a question later on about what, oh, yeah, so we stay do. Tuned, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So, so thank you, Anita, for the question. Um, next question comes from Herbert K. I think we all, we all know which yes. Herbert K we're talking about. What are you most excited about as summer mm-hmm. comes? Well, when I think of summer, I think of 4th of July. And when I think of 4th of July for 2024 for the Low Tie Boys, I think we will be in a really cool uh, house in Whistler getting ready to race Attila Whistler, Canada's first Attila event. Um, So that's what I'm really looking forward to Uh, this year. We've mentioned a few times that we're bringing the entire families up. We're living under one roof for a week straight, so we'll see how <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I think our kids are are like, oh my goodness! Wait, I could wake up and just see my friend like in the you morning. I'm know. like, yeah, so, it's so, it's crazy. So Rocky told me today we're recording this on a Friday that her and Charlie Chipper's daughter were talking about all the stuff they're, they're already do, scheming, and that they want to buy presents for each other when they're there. So want to each they want to buy like some Canadian. Okay. So I'm like, I'm like, who's, who's paying for these prices? He's like, well, you are dad. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. I guess Which is, we'll add it to the Sure. Path. Why yeah. not? <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so our kids are super stoked. Um, yeah. So that, that, that's going to be a lot of fun for sure. And yeah, I echo that. I think like going to Worcester for the summer, sort of joint family vacation, I think it's going to be a super fun week and yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah. And that for us, that's our, that's our A race, our focus. We are doing the Bellingham Swim Run, which is a, a more um, grassroots style event in June. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I really think is like early June is really kicking off the season for us and, and starting uh, starting to, to get out there. Yeah, then we'll roughly have a swim run a month, except for September um, through for November. September, yeah. Yeah. For so, September with nothing in a couple of months. I know, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Um, okay, now our next question comes from Naomi M. She asks, are there any special considerations for training for a swim run that takes place at elevation? Now, we mentioned when we sent out the the request for AMA questions. If we didn't know the answer, we'd ask people who do. So I happened to ask Mario Faroli, elite running coach, front of the show. When he talks, I listen. Yeah. So I I was on a run with him and I was like, Hey, let me ask you, I need need an expert opinion. So this is what he said. He said, there's essentially three things you want to consider when doing a race in elevation. If you don't live at elevation, you're going to be at a deficit. The best thing you can do to prepare for a race at elevation is have a high level of fitness. The fitter you are, the more you'll be able to mitigate sort of the effects of okay. elevation. The second thing he said was to really pay attention to nutrition. Your burn rate's going to be higher. So you want to be hydrating more. You want to be taking on more fuel mm. to take – basically like you're going to be pumping, working Make harder. Make up for the extra you gotta, energy. Exactly, okay. exactly. And then the last thing he said was like, find a way to simulate conditions. Can you go up for a training camp at elevation or do something like that? Not that you're going to get any real adaptation, but at least you'll know what it's going to kind of feel like when you go. And then he said the final thing, which is a little bit hard to, um, you know, depends on budgets and all that yeah. is like, it's the timing of when you go up there. So, so the general school of thought is if you show up as soon as the race as possible to elevation, then you don't really get bogged down by the effects of altitude like within the first 48 hours. Okay. But if you're going to be there for like a couple of days, it's, it's like you either want to get there right before the race or you want to stay for at least a week, which is, you know. <laughs> yeah, so get it there, is what it is. have a pre-vacation or you get there and you're, you know, you're, you're, you arrive, pack a pick up the races the next yeah. day. Which may or may not be ideal for folks, but those are definitely good tips from Mario. I thought so. Um, and I'm sure our friends over at Precision Fuel and Hydration probably have some fueling hydration tips on their website as well uh, for that one specific point. But that, that makes a, a lot of sense. Your, your body's working harder. You're going to need to put a little bit more gas in it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, our next question comes from Tom M. He's like, hi, guys. Is there a, make, is there a hi, way to... Blah, blah. Sorry, everybody. Is there a way to make bibs easier to deal with? Mm. Question for the ages. It's, so he says it's a hassle 
getting to the kangaroo pockets? Does cutting the piping around the sleeves help? Thanks. Mm, interesting. What this is a good question, this? Tom. Yeah. I think one strategy that Chris and I have started employing that does help a little bit is we get a very tight fitting bib. So it's uh, less baggy, and you know when something baggy gets wet, as swim run bibs will, it kind of gets to be a little bit harder to manage. What I do in this situation, that might not work for everyone to get a small, smaller size bib or a larger size bib. I will usually kind of like pull mine up, kind of like a crop top when I'm running. If I'm feeling like I need to get more air to cool myself down, or mm-hmm. hey, I need to get my paddles out, I'll actually like pull it up basically at to my armpits yeah so basically um, and i think i do the same thing like if if the if you're unzipped yeah if, if i'm if i'm ca- if i'm at least zipped down the the bib is, is already up kind of up i'm yeah. just keeping it up so up at your chest level stuff. and then in terms of transitions and stuff like this is definitely where having you know use your partner when chris and i transition maybe it will or or we're cabbing back up it's usually like you know I'll make an announcement like, "Hey, I'm going to cab up here." I'll, I'll, Chris, I'll yeah. kind of like start mule. He'll start muling some of my gear. I'll hand him my paddles or my my bibs, so that way I can just concentrate on getting my thing up, kind of getting situated, and then we'll, and then we will, uh, we'll switch off there. And that's when it, you know, know how long the run legs are. Kind of have maybe you have the paddle markings on there. Hey, we have a half mile. I'm going to start doing it now. You don't want to wait to do this until like, oh, shit, there's the water. Oh, we're supposed to be in swimming right now. Kind of the earlier, the better you can do for that stuff um, on on that front. Yeah. Any yeah, other, I, think, I, I think it's just like... I don't think like, cutting the piping or any of that stuff is really going to help. Yeah, I mean, opinion. I think the piping cutting, this is something that I think, uh, you know, friend of the show, eminent swim runner Marcus Barton came up with as a way of mitigating chafing if you're wearing a sleeveless yeah. suit. Um, so that's a little, you know, bonus pro tip right there. But yeah, I think it's mostly just getting used to it, coming up with your routine and then just really trying not to deviate from it. Like, 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 like Chipper and I mentioned, usually when I, when I'm zipped down, the bib is already up to sort of around my neck to just mm-hmm. leave it there because access whatever you want. And then it's just like part of my routine to, you know, make sure I'm all organized, zip up and then just put the bib down. Um, so it's just kind of figuring out what's going to work and like anything practice. It's like a practice thing too. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you do your swarm practices, wear a bib. Um, I think it's, uh, you know, it was former world champs guests, guests of the show. I think it was who was saying, it's like, you gotta, you gotta practice fiddling with the little bits. Right. Yeah. Um, so, so hopefully that's helpful. Yeah. I think that is. So when you're doing your swarm practice, bust out your old, now vintage Odyssey race bibs mm-hmm. or your Swim Run NC or your Lake James ones. Or your Low Tide Boys. Or your Low Tide Boys one on sale now at lowtideboys.com slash shop. <laughs> but yeah. Um, thanks for the question, Tom. Yeah. More from Tom later. Um, who is Yalz's coach from Hugh? Yalz's. We haven't had that before. Hugh, uh, fresh off his appearance on the Carbon Fiber Paddle yeah, episode, which we got great feedback on. Um, yeah, so we have a different answer this, this year than, than we have. So, um, I have started working with Liz, uh, coach Liz of team Batman's parents. She's a ex pro triathlete. She's a swim runner, um, and, and works, uh, and is already a coach. Uh, I think she really indexed on some of the things that I was looking to, uh, to change there. Like she, she knows what swim run is. So that, I think that's a really important, yeah, she's race, you know, world she's, champs. she's race world champs. She knows what it takes to do it at a high level. Um, and yeah, so far I think I'm how I'm probably five or six months into this, uh, relationship, if you will. Um, and it's going really well. Um, but yeah, that's, that's who I've been, uh, leveraging this year for coaching and, we have plenty of uh, content on on coaches as well, and and links to that on the on the site uh, sure. as well. And Chris, well, you're doing a little. Uh, it's a tough question yeah. because I I feel like I'm at once coachless and then just surrounded by coaches. <laughs> you have a lot of uh, you, you have some advisors. Is yes, how I, is how I yes. would like. I have I, I have coaching yeah. advisors. So so Chipper and I had the same sort of confidential coach for the last few years. Um, at their request, they wanted to, to remain confidential. Um, and, and yeah, uh, I just enjoyed kind of having a break and sort of 
parlay that into kind of just trusting my instincts, knowing what we need to do to prepare for races and just trying to maintain generally fit. But then working with Mario on sort of running side of things, Mm -hmm. working with um, uh, Mario Ferroli and then working with Nate Helming on sort of the strength and sort of body type. And he used to be my triathlon Mm -hmm. coach back in the day. Um, And I've never been fitter or stronger than when I was working with him. Mm -hmm. And we're also really good friends. He was like on the show, I think like episode like 20 or something. Early days. Super early days. Um, and uh, and then, yeah, then from there, I guess I'm using, You're using Brian head Johns. Coach. Head coach. I'm, using, head uh, coach I'm using Brian Johns, three times Olympian, his programming uh, for um, for my swimming. And then, you know, still doing some Tower 26 workouts and, and trying to live like the Jerry Rodriguez yeah. life. So you're kind of going with the run base – and then you feel like you right. know, you know, we've been doing this for a while. We've tri- we've done the swim room world champions for for a couple of years. You feel like, hey, I know yeah. when we I don't need have to get- anything that intense. That's true. We don't have a 10, 12 hour race this year. It's mm-hmm, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know what it, you need to do to like get ready for swim run swimming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, and I think we mentioned this in our training for swim run episode and YouTube video where it's like you know, this year I'm doing way more running. My, you know, my A race for swim run is Whistler, but my A race for running is this race called the rut in Montana, which is just this like crazy 50 K. Um, so what we said in, in our episode was this idea of like, Hey, you just want to maintain swimming. Like swimming just happens. Just, it just, yeah, just a steady, just like strength should and mobility should. And then the running sort of goes in and out depending on what you're training for. Mm-hmm. So I was indexing more on running. Now I'm going to index a little bit more on swimming, a little bit more on speed now that I'm not doing ultra stuff. And then we'll kind of transition back. So for for the types of experience, endurance experiences I've wanted this year, I think this was yeah. the best way to kind of set it up. And, you know, um, all these coaches are friends. Except, yeah. You know, and Brian Johns, I, I get is like his AI friend, I guess. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. That's what I'm doing. Cool. Great question. Uh, Hugh. Yeah. So next one comes another one from Tom. So he's, he's like, now I have a much better question for the Q&A show. Is there any way to avoid dropping gear during the race? Asking for a friend who may or may not have dropped a set of goggles during the Lake James pre-race clinic. Wow. Related, he's learned to swim without goggles. Okay. Well, yeah. good. The more you know that you can do that yeah. now. I also feel like... Is this somehow related to, I was reading the Adorkables race report on Lake James and Amy found an extra pair of goggles that she put into her wetsuit, which slid down into her nether regions, I Ooh. guess. So mm. I don't know if you're getting those back, Tom. Probably don't want them. Probably, man. yeah. Uh, anyway, um, how do you avoid dropping things? I would say this is where I feel like from a gear perspective, simplicity yeah. And minimalism is a good thing to kind of exercise. Yeah. Hey, it's great to have, you know, an extra pair of goggles as a backup or an extra swim cap or extra nutrition. But if you can kind of find that razor's edge, if you will, on like what's just enough to like accomplish the goals that I'm looking at this race and not feeling like oh, I'm going to have an anxiety attack because I'm really scared about my goggles breaking, like yeah. where can you find that balance? Yep. Um, and then also, again, as we mentioned a lot, like have a plan, have a routine for your, for your race. That also yeah. means like have a plan. Like I know in my kangaroo top, I know where my paddle goes every time. I yeah. know where my gels are going. I know where the tether's going if, if we're taking that off. Um, so I think yep. that will kind of help. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. I agree. I think like having your routine set and trying not to deviate from it. So it becomes a more of a habit and you know where everything is. Um, yeah, I mean, for some of the new arc suits, one thing that that I did for the World Champs is I took some rock tape and I actually closed, I used tape to seal the pockets on the inside with gels and stuff. So when you cap down, they don't, you know, they're less likely to fall out. That worked really well. Yeah. My only advice there is just do it the night before while everything's like nice and super dry so you get a nice sticky seal. And then, yeah, at aid station, just like rip it off. We've we had stuff drop though and, too. Like I've definitely dropped drops. the gel or sure uh, stuff. Stuff, happens, stuff drops, yeah. and 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 I think with goggles, I think what you'll find, Tom, is that uh, once you've lost a pair of goggles during a race, you start carrying that extra yeah. pair. <laughs> I will also put my goggles. I will have them at my neck, so I won't take them off. I'll actually bring them down uh, like a necklace. 
essentially, a goggle yeah. necklace. And then like that a, way, unless my head's going somewhere, the goggles will not go anywhere. Yeah. It's a good question, though. All right. So next one's pretty, it's a heavy one. Wow. So it's from Trista, Trista M. Who is the person, athlete, sponsor, mentor, RD coach, et cetera, within the sport of swim run that you admire most? Wow. And then corollary question and outside the sport. So <laughs> you're gonna you're looking to kick that well, one to me. That's I'll I'll start it off. So this okay. is something I've actually been thinking. So I don't know if this is the person, but this is a person that okay. I've been thinking is really important for the sport that I think mm-hmm. that I admire, and I think more people should just give them props. And this one person, his name is Christopher Sunberg. Now, mm. if you don't know who he is, check out episode I don't know it's early six too. or something. Six, yeah, five or he six. was the first brand to come on our show. He's one of the founders of Arc Sports first company to respond to dm from our so there's many reasons if you've heard this show long enough you know there's many reasons why our origin story and arcs is so intertwined because they're the first one to even yeah. reply to us um but this guy he's not he, he's a swim runner he's an athlete he's swedish but he fell in love with the sport of swim run and essentially helped create launch and create and sustain arc sports yeah since its beginning now why is that important it's super important because essentially like the the technological advancements in the sports by him supporting like Daniel Sands, who I've called the Da Vinci of swim run since, since we've learned about him um, and everything they're doing to move the needle in terms of what's possible in the sport. I mean, you saw the times drop in the world yeah. championship as a direct result of their evolution of their what's the their, equipment their, side their, of their, things. Yeah. yeah. The technical evolution of the wetsuit and the gear. So but none of that is possible without Christopher falling in love with swim run and basically being like, Hey, this is going to be a little pet project of mine. He's, you know, he Making runs video games, he makes video stuff. games and it does, has a bunch of tons of like, you boats know, 007 all, yeah. style boats, <laughs> villain boats. He's got these crazy boats. Anyway, he's awesome. And, and honestly, like every time I see him, I just need to tell him thank you because it's really his investment that has moved us forward for the sport that we all love. Outside the sport, I don't know. It's just, you know, uh, that's, that's that's a tough one. Yeah, you're going to just... That's a tough you're one. You're going to pass yeah. on that one? That's yeah, fair. Trista, send me that's, a text. I'll, I'm happy to have that discussion, <laughs> but... I, uh, I'll plus up the Christopher Sundberg uh, one as well. I think specifically in the U.S. swim run scene, two people come to mind, which is not totally answers your question, but, you know, I'm going to take my own it's way with show. it. It's you know. <laughs> I say two people... One is the godfather of Swarm Run himself, Andy Hewitt. And then I'm actually going to say Lars Fenonger of formerly Odyssey, now Atala Swarm Run. They have definitely been the pioneers on the U.S. side of things, putting on races on, you know, different coasts. But, you know, we certainly... Putting on swim run races sure. is not going to turn you into like a multimillionaire overnight. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and Forever. tears on that. So, like, we know, yeah, we know, like, the work and the hustle that both Andy and Lars have have put in over the years. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. 2016, 2017, dealing with COVID and still making it happen. And now we're kind of starting to see it take off a little bit. So, I do yeah. think, like, Without those two people's involvement, I'm not totally certain that Swim Run would be kind of what it is today in the United States. Yeah, you know who I'd add um, for that if we're going to do like a, like a little like Mount sure. Rushmore of U.S. Swim yeah. Running? I would add Herbert Crable to that as well. Right, that's because, a great call. Because like on Slow Twitch and stuff, he was writing and talking about Swim Run before, yeah. before a lot of people, before um, you know the World's Toughest Endurance Challenges book, which I which is how I learned about the sport mm-hmm. and stuff. So, yeah, that's a good. That's certainly uh, a, a great addition to to that. So I'll I'll expand my answer to include okay. Herbert as well um, there, and and they do uh, a p- pure uh, nonprofit race as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So big which will be at that. we'll be at a swim run and see this year. We're looking forward to it, yep. and they're all charged up after taking a a year off outside the sport. Yeah, um, it's a big one. Yeah. I, I admire you, I'll Chipper, pass. inside and Thanks. outside. The I was going to say Chris, and then it just make it easy. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, our next question. Ooh. Oh, question from Coach. Coach, Coach, Coach Liz, Liz has one. Uh, wh- wh- <laughs> what is your most memorable team racing moment? 
Yeah, well, there's a couple I, obvious ones that we should just like get out of the way. Yeah, like obviously finishing world champs twice. That was that, pretty good. Yeah, those are those are high up. Those there, are definitely but. memorable. I I feel like each race we was memorable for its own. Uh, uh, obviously, Atalas are you know in their own class. I will actually say, for me, the Orcas race where I was bonking my brains out for like, I don't know, five hours or something. It's a race where I was the MVP. Chris was the MVP <laughs> in this race. But I think for me personally, it was just, uh, it was like, okay, you know, it kind of really brought home everything that we really love about Sorma. It's like, hey, I was down like 90% of the day and Chris like got me there and made it happen. And then also for myself, like, Hey, I could make it happen when you endured when like, I mean, I probably had like 400 calories the entire (laughs) day, like not a great thing. And it like, obviously the course and everything is, is really great, but also the sort of after of that, like we had the big house and people just kept coming over and hanging out. And I was like, I am, I'm on my deathbed nearly here, but you know, and our friends came and the concho bows were there. It was just a really great experience and the pizza was good that was that was a good one yeah that that was yeah i I mean i like that one because i i never it's probably the race where one of us had to really like put the other person on their back to such a degree yeah we haven't yeah because for the most part we just kind of like i was down bad as taylor swift would say yeah i mean so so yeah i think that that race was cool but for me it's really sort of the finish line vibes after finishing that first casco where it was just like what the hell was this man yeah (laughs) i mean i think that race was so hard and we were we thought we were prepared, but we oh weren't. My God. There was just a lot of stuff going on. Um, it's one of the first times where we were racing, and we stopped being chatty and just like basically was like, "Oh, we got <laughs> we got we got work to do." I that There's race is definitely a top one for me too. And I remember, I mean, we were like running towards the finish line, and I was like, "This was like so hard, but I can't. I like I can't <laughs> wait to do the next one." Yeah, that and then similar. I have another one. This is a good question, I guess. Um, Catalina. Atala Catalina, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. because that one for us we was like uh, such an inflection point for us as a, as quote unquote athletes uh, and as like dads. We were rocking the full on dad bod at Catalina, and yeah. like something about that race, and it just sort of really ignited like a fire in us from like an athletic standpoint, and we started getting really serious about that. And then you know, uh, then the yeah. rest is history, as they say. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, that but, race yeah. was that race was awesome for sure. Hopefully, it comes back one of these days. Fingers crossed. Um, or next, next we have like a series of four questions, which I think we're just going to try to rapid fire. This is from Matt and Pat. The That's water. coming from the whole team, but I'm thinking it's Matt because Pat, Pat's kind of too late back I don't to see be submitting Pat questions. Is like running the press on the yeah, water. I don't think account. he's running comms. Yeah, I don't think he is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the first question: What is the worst smelling piece of gear you have? Oh. I think it has to be shoes just because they get all like bought. I down. will say my kangaroo tops have rocked my world a few times. <laughs> okay, noted, noted. Yeah. All right. Favorite piece of gear that you may not actually that may not actually help, but you swear by. Oh, that's a good question. You know, I think I love my C E P socks, just the right amount of compression. Yeah. And at this point, it's just like I don't even care if they work or not. Like they make me happy and it reminds me of swim running and I just swear by them. That's a pretty good answer. I like that because I don't have any like data points to tell you that like, oh yeah, it's making me, I, I will say, yeah, like a little bit of compression's nice and also kind of keeps the, 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 you know, the stuff off your legs. Like you're always scratching on branches mm-hmm, and rocks mm-hmm. and stuff. So that, that's helpful um, to have that, but that's a good answer. I'll, Going to just gonna go with that one? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> what is something that you know you should probably do in training, but don't do for some reason? He says that theirs is kicking and swimming. Oh. Uh, well, I think we're, I think we're, if you would have asked us this last year, I would have said strength. Strength and like flexibility. And But this yeah. year, this year, I think we've both been on the strength train and, yeah. and I think it's been good. Um, yeah. So I would say strength and mobility stuff, just combo, whatever that means. That yeah, stuff. and I think something that I that people probably could do if you're looking for your own tip would be fueling during training. 
I think like that's a pretty big miss for most people. And they come to races and they're like, oh yeah, like I'm just going to be able to eat this many gels over five hours, but you haven't practiced that in like your long runs or your long mm-hmm, swim runs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I've, I've definitely noticed that really helps uh, when we do that. Like, you know, anyway. Yeah. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a good sort okay. of global one. And then the last one is if, if either of you partnered with Marcus. Marcus what, Barton. Marcus Barton. Yeah. Mr. Low Tide Boy 2020. What would the team name be for <laughs> each right. team? I mean, I'm just, I defer to Marcus. <laughs> Call it whatever you want, dude. Yeah, he'll. Uh, we could do. I think there, there, there's some team name around hair and not hair. Something around. Yeah. Something Marcus and the hair, but like, uh, like the uh, rabbit, maybe. Yeah. Could be something like yeah, that. I like that. I like okay. that. All right. Our next question comes from Nargus H. She asks, "Is <laughs> she asks if we're gonna ever produce an, an against medical advice episode?" Oof. And I think, well, I think she just volunteered herself as be, um, a licensed psychiatrist <laughs> yes. to uh, to help, uh, you know, host that show with us. But yeah, I, I think for the most part, our PSA would be don't go against medical yeah, advice. Our, our legal team has advised <laughs> us not to produce this episode. <laughs> consult, please consult a physician before engaging in any, uh, you know, endurance activity. Okay, next question comes from Sir... S J O E R D, short. short. What do you think about the World Championship half distance at Swim on Troya? Well, short. This was for people who don't know. This was a Swim on Portugal race. Uh, oh. So Bruno Safara, who's been friend of the show, had him on. We we known about every all the swim running that's been happening mm-hmm. in Portugal since we started the show. So this race, like the other ones. Cool location, yeah. Warm Mediterranean, weather, warm weather, warm. Mediterranean style swim run. They have kids races. I mean, so, I mean, without actually doing the race, I mean, I don't know, but I would say, I have I haven't seen any photos from any swim run Portugal race that hasn't made me want to be like want to do it. Yeah, I think also we haven't really partook in a warm weather swim run race. Uh, you know, we've done swim runs when it's been hot. But not like a beach and like warm trop yeah. a tropical swim run. I guess is probably the better way to say it. So um, that's certainly I think that index is more on like the vac- race vacation angle, yeah. which is which is good. Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because uh, Coach John Stevens, longtime friend of the show. Mm, yeah. He and I have been talking about swim run in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, yes. Vieques, be awesome. And then uh, Davi- David, who we had. Um, yes. Forgetting what their team name was, though. Oh, it was like New Swim Run France. New Swim Run France. Um, wow. He's his French wife, and his wa- wife, yeah, Rican, he's French. Right? His wife is Puerto Rican, yeah. and he was talking about doing a swim run in Vegas. So wow. anyway, yeah, tropical swim runs for the win. Um, our next question comes from Vincent M. Any tips for swimming straight where you don't see the ground or it's in the dark? Ooh. So obviously got to shout out form swim you want to swim straight swim straight technology yeah in their goggles i would say <laughs> that's i mean that's the easy answer nice one chris it's a layup thanks vincent he's a it's a plant question a plant sponsored question from vincent here he runs comps yeah, he, for run, he's, he works at form um that's a good tip obviously one thing that we have always done that seems to work well for us, and we've, you know, people who are smarter that are open water swim experts have said to us, you know, Matt Dixon, Purple Patch Fitness, Coach John Stevens, uh, and other uh, folks, is before you kind of get in the water, this might be hard to apply if it's dark, you want to kind of pick out something across like where you're going. Maybe that is actually the little you know, teardrop flag they have. Maybe it's a a house. Maybe it's a tree or a big rock formation that you can constantly reference when you're swimming. Yeah, but get your bearings before Before you you start swimming. So before you start swimming, you're like, oh, where am I going? Like, you know, while you have a little bit of a thing. And if it's dark and it's a swim run, there'll be a strobe, there'll be something there. (laughs) So it's really about getting yourself sort of lined up first. For swim run, at least, most swims are going to be line of sight. So there's yeah. going to be very few swims where you got to swim out of ways and then bank, do a dog leg into a cove. That exists. And typically in swim runs, when that happens, there's like a potato chip or a big buoy yeah. to let you know when you need to turn in. But for the most or part, a kayak or something. I would say, what, 
eighty percent of swim run swims are going to be line of sight. So it's really about yeah. trying to find your point uh, before you go in, and then just kind of sticking to it, and then sight often. The darker and the, the I guess like the more you worried you are about sighting, the more you should sight. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I believe back in the triathlon days, Matt Dixon was saying every like five to seven strokes you would be sighting. Which makes sense. Yeah. Like, if you want to stay on course, that's the way to f- swim fastest. Yeah, and I think as a swim run team, Chipper's usually leading the swims now. So my master plan has finally come to full fruition <laughs> it's been here. Exercise. Um, but I still sight from the back, not because I don't trust Chipper, just because four eyes are better than two, right? And it's just helpful have to have everyone. <laughs> just helpful to have everyone kind of on the job, and just because you're in the back, loving being in the in the you know in the wake. That doesn't mean that you sh- you can't be helpful. Great tangent that pu- puts it back, calls it back to Liz's question. Do you mm-hmm. remember at that our first swim run Casco Bay when we were doing that? <laughs> yeah, we are our shoulders are just we are nuked from a physical this standpoint. Is a, this is a shark swim. This is the shark swim, and it's like yeah, Shark Cove twelve hundred. And Chris and I were like three swims <laughs> before this. We're like, I can't. My shoulders like they're destroyed. <laughs> So we get in, we're halfway in this swim, and Chris is like, hold up, hold up. And he's like, are you sure we're going the right way? I'm like, I think so, but I'm, we're just trying to like get this race right. over and with. Right, and you it's see a flag, a and I see the flag, but to my left, I see all these people kind of like running along the shore. On the shore, like running. And I'm like, oh. I was like, did we miss something? I guess. So they basically, they, they uh, yeah, they were skipping. We didn't miss them. We did it right. We, we did we it, did it right. but uh, great callback story uh, Yeah, on that's that. a super funny one. Um, okay, next question is from Tyler. Another y'all. What shoes do y'all wear for Utila Austin Pace Bend Park? Oh, it's great. Yeah, great, great question. question. These shoes were a big favorite of the low tie boys in 23, and I don't see a reason in that change in this year, but it's the uh, Adidas Terex Speed Ultra. Speed Ultras. Speed Ultras. They're yeah. out of commission, unfortunately. They are uh, out of production. Um, Sad. But you can still find them online. They just have the right mix of uh, really good grip. They use a continental grip. They use a mountain bike like tread pattern on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Incredible, like draining, lightweight, very fast, racy feeling shoe. Um, We have a show on it. We We have a gear talk show on it. Yeah, we. Yeah, that one's great. I mean, I think for for Austin. It's pretty flat. There isn't anything super technical. There's a lot of climbing sort of vertical like, up and down yeah. from the water. Every year it gets worse from like from from the swims in the Colorado River. You usually have to scale up, do some bouldering up. Yeah. So you want something with a decent amount of grip, but you don't need like these crazy lugs. You don't need lugs. Like I yeah, definitely. That's that's a great great but, call. But also for that one, I think if it's a fir- your first swim run or just starting Let's out, use your normal trail run. Any trail should be fine as long as it drains well and not Gore-Tex. Because the problem with Gore-Tex shoes for swim run is that once the water gets in, it can't get out. So it's problematic. Yeah, that is very problematic. Okay, the next question comes from Mel. Mel B, um, how do you get up so early to swim? This is a question I've asked myself about Chris for many years. <laughs> well, you get up early too, dude. Well, now I've come. I've I've found the secret, and the secret is Mel. And unfortunately, it's not a great answer. <laughs> you just have to go to bed at like nine thirty. That's what I do, and I realized once I found the right amount of time that I need to go to sleep. It's a lot easier to wake up at five o'clock or four forty-five to get up to hit the five thirty shift. But I will say, if I have the opportunity to sleep in, I will. And sleeping in is like thirty extra minutes. Uh, like this morning, Chris was already in the pool, and I I got an extra you know thirty minutes in. Yeah, I was about like three thousand yards in by the time. Yeah, you and, showed I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, like, what's hey, up? Buddy. I'm gonna get my warm up in. And then, <laughs> By the time Chris like, does warm later. up, uh, I have the lane to myself. <laughs> yeah, well, definitely warmed up the lane for you. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a great answer. I think definitely making sure you're getting enough sleep is going to be a priority, whether you want to do well in sports, life, whatever. But I think it's also um, it's kind of necessity for my life yes. and my priorities. I want to be home for breakfast with the kids and be able to help out getting them ready to school. You know, it requires getting up that early. So I pretty much reverse engineer when I need to be home <clears throat> to make it happen. And luckily... Luckily for me, we have this awesome pool that has basically swimming from five thirty until yeah. until nine. I think yeah, right? that's definitely so, you know for the parents out there, like 
the morning is just the time that is the most convenient for the family. And that's sort yeah. of the route we take. And it's also like for me, every hour that goes by is an hour less likely that I'll make it to the pool. Yeah, absolutely. So that's happening. And I now. also will, one more note, I also kind of try to, like this is like a mindset thing, but I kind of try to like embrace it of like, hey, you're you're waking up early, you're getting some good work in, you got your workout, maybe I look at it the night before, cool, this is going to be fun. Like you just kind of start getting in the mindset and then when the alarm hits, you're like, hey, <clears throat> going to get my coffee, going to have my piece of toast, like got my little routine down and it just kind of makes it a little bit a little bit easier yeah um, and if you want some there. tips on doing that check out our episode with dr justin ross where it's all about yeah. you know work working you can definitely control your 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 headspace a little bit better and like like chipper like you mentioned just sort of embracing it and um makes it a lot easier if, rather than thinking it's sucking all the time yeah um our next question comes from dave dave d how's it going buddy he asked us to list the arc suits in order of suitability nice. from cold conditions to warm ones. So I don't know if we have anything that's going to be different than what they have on their website, but I think what I will say, so definitely like, I'm curious what you think about this shipper. Obviously Orno X is going to be the one from, it's their coldest weather suit. Yeah. Their warmest weather suit's going to be the VIG. And then in between you'll have like, um, you know, the Uta and the Corp, I guess as, and then sleeve and sleeveless. Yeah. So I think it's really, um, Everyone's going to be different. So if you run hot, um, I would always index on on the Uta because that is like the most versatile suit in the in the, the lineup. in the in the lineup. Um, that being said, if you can handle the Vig uh, from a cold perspective, the Vig is going to be the best suit that you can wear anytime because it's most minimal, most freedom of movement. The less requires less fiddling, less coming down. So I don't know if that actually answers your question, but I think Arc website for you know, for like 101 yeah. compatibility. But, but for- I'll say Orno X, I will actually say the Corp as being the second warmest because the so Uto like a- uses a little bit of a, a thinner bottom. Mm-hmm. So I think mm-hmm. from a bottom perspective and then Uto and then Vig and then you have the Uto Air and the Vig Air, which is like a sleeveless thing. So I guess the Vig Air, so the sleeveless Vig is probably the war- you know, the one to wear when it's warmer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and then I don't know where I'd put the Uto, probably in between the Uto and the Vig, because it still has neoprene. Um, but not having neoprene on the shoulders and your arms does make a, a, a you know, decent difference. Because I did wear... Yeah, heat, yeah, t- uh, temperature regulation-wise, yeah, temperature, yeah. Yeah. And then Arc does have their, like, thermal kangaroo piece... Which we we have one, but we haven't had a chance to to bust it out yet. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of interesting things that people can do to For sure. If you're well, trying to be more adverse, to, you're more adverse. Well, to it's almost like if you want an insight into the type of shit that Chipper and I oh. uh, like text to each other randomly, it'll be like, "Hey, man, you know what would be a super unlock? <laughs> if you use the Vig with the thermal top, because then you kind of have this like modular system. <laughs> like, let's you email get, like, the mobility. <laughs> You got the mobility of, uh, you know, or like, oh, you know, what you should do. They should make a put an pockets Uta, on the side of it, an Uta, but put use just use the sleeves of the, you know. So anyway, yeah. so this is the type of stuff we think about. So I think there's there's the still room for optimization, but uh, but yeah, I would say like trust the arc lineup. If you run hot, index on something that'll that's better for warmer. And if you're only gonna have one suit, have something that you're not gonna totally cook in a warmer race if you're planning on doing different if you're just gonna be doing cold weather races or no wax all the way, like don't even think about it. Yeah. But if you're to bonus question or bonus answer for you, Dave, like one your one suit recommendation, I, I would say the Uto. Yeah. Um our last question mm. comes from Frederick B, also Mr. known Frank as Paddle Mr. Himself. Frank Paddle. He asks, how often do you pee in the wetsuit? Well, there's a great story coming off the end of this answer. Oh. I'll, I'll say that. I I mean, every race. It, I mean, it just kind of happens. If anything, it isn't like, how often do you pee in the wetsuit? I think like the, uh, the nuanced question is like, how are you trying to time it? Are you trying to be like, you know, so let me, let me ask you that question, Chipper. Are there optimal times for you to pee and please don't say when you're leading swims. Yeah. Well, I do. That is a mental <laughs> hang up that I, it's a block I have. Okay. Because I haven't done that. <laughs> Let the record state. But I 
have a hard time peeing when I'm swimming, which makes it hard because it's not, I mean, I, ha- I don't think I've been able to pee when I'm running, really. So it's kind of tough. So I will say maybe if there is like a lull, you're hiking a hill or you're about to get in, Chris and I will, we will sometimes be like, hey, I got to take a pee break like on a transition and we'll just go right there. And then, so that's kind of been our move. Yeah. I'm sure there's, you know, if you're way more hardcore, you're like, you know, pissing in your partner's face when you're leading swims and stuff, but we just ain't there. <laughs> we, just, <laughs> we definitely ain't there. Yeah. I think like the way I think about it is the same. It's hard for me. It's probably a skill you can learn to pee while swimming. Yeah. I was like peeing uh, on the bike and triathlon. People were talking about that. I'm like, I can't, I couldn't make it happen. <laughs> uh, stage fright. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, so I think timing it. So I usually try to pee as I'm transitioning into a swim because then yeah. it's also like, oh, you're kind of washing it off like right away. Yeah, it's good. I don't know. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, entering a swim is, is yeah. Like, and if you you're know, because you're kind of slowing down and like cabin up and doing whatever, like there should be enough time to, to get some. Uh, yeah, you should be able to like <laughs> do something. Now, the story on this is... I. I was thinking about this in bed the other night because I was I saw this question. I'm like, this is great. I was literally laughing again, just thinking about the story. It's so funny. At Casco Bay 2023, you know, they had the fog situation. And some point during the race, we kind of stopped because it was very yeah, we clear were doing something loops. was up. People are asking questions. We weren't in tech, we weren't sure like, oh, we just do one more loop and then yeah. jumping off the dock and going. Like so there was a It was clear the yeah. race is like over or the 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 first okay. race they did. We were stopped talking to somebody. And to the earlier question about peeing, I thought, well, we're not doing anything now. What a great opportunity for me to relieve myself. Now, I was wearing the Uto Air, the sleeveless one. Was I? Wow. I was wearing some Uto <laughs> suit, and the bottoms on that one aren't as thick as the Orno. Yeah, it's the running plus plus bottoms. Yeah, which in my head, I thought, oh, I'm going to pee, and it's going to kind of dribble <laughs> down my leg. You know, I'm okay with that. Maybe the, I don't so, know what that says about me. So let me just interject here. So then I'm standing on the side just looking at Chipper, talking to some poor, unsuspecting new swim runner. <laughs> Asking, I don't know what he was asking, and P- Chipper's just standing there like, like, uh, like the guy who's too old for the club, just kind of leaning up yeah. on, you know, just stick. we're like standing in the middle of the trail or the road. <laughs> Big old street. He looked like a fountain in Venice. It was. He looked like you know, like the baby, the baby. Yeah, like the fountains. ping. Ba- ping baby. I mean, and I was, pl- I was well hydrated, clearly. <laughs> And I didn't expect, I mean, it was, it was like shooting out of my suit. Like it was like, it was, it was like inches shooting out of my suit. And I was like, and I looked, (laughs) I looked down and I was like, oh my God, what is happening? Like, what am I doing? (laughs) Yes. Again, back to me. Chipper rediscovered his modesty. (laughs) I just kind of like turned to the side. (laughs) Yeah, I would just stand there. I'm like, I think I'm just gonna have a gel or something because this is like, I could not. It wasn't until afterwards where oh. where I really process what what just happened. But that was uh, wow. That was oh, such a good pee story. Yeah. Now uh, we have heard other. Pee. I loved I loved telling Chipper's wife Kristen that story. By the yeah, way, that was a great was, retelling. Yeah, she. I'm sure she was shaking her head. <laughs> You know, we hear people sometimes pee in the start corral to kind of like get it out. Maybe it's a nerves thing or whatever. But, you know, word of warning, if you're wearing one of these running plus plus bottoms from ARC, they're great for freedom during running. It also isn't great at knocking your stream down. Yeah. Or just, yeah. Anyway, there was was something going on there. But yeah, yeah, I think peeing in the suit is probably, you know, natural. We make a lot of fun of pooping in suits, which sometimes also needs to happen. But hopefully, um, hopefully, hopefully that's more avoidable. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Hey, we mentioned poop on the show, so I think that's probably a good place to wrap yeah, that up. That is a good one. Thank you, everyone, who sent us questions. Um, really pre- I was really surprised by uh, how many. Yeah. Uh, but thank you so much for that. Of course, you don't have to wait for an AMA shout-out anytime to send us a DM or drop us an email at lowtideboys with a Z at gmail.com. And with that, See thank you there. so much. Yeah, we did it. Out. That's it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for listening to the show. Make sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. 
and leave a wet rating or review since that's the best way to help other people discover the show and the sport of swim run. Check out our website, lowtideboys.com, that's boys with a Z, for swim run resources, including gear guides, tips, how-to videos, and so much more. Make sure to check out our meme page at the Low Tide Boys on Instagram. If you have any questions or suggestions for the show, send us a DM or email us at lowtideboys at gmail.com. We'd like to thank Riding Easy Records for our show music and, of course, our wives for their support and tolerance of our swim run and other activities. Lots of activities. Lots of activities. <laughs> Finally, you can support our efforts on Patreon. Until next time, get out there and go for a swim. Then a run. And then a swim. Then another run. Then another swim. Then run some more. Just keep going. Let's go. And then stop at some point because, you know. And fuel. Don't forget to fuel. Got to fuel, too. Of course, yes. Yes. <laughs>